some of America's most famous leaders were not shy about telling the world of their confidence in prayer. George Washington, for example, was known far and wide as the praying general. Time and again, Washington expressed complete confidence that his prayers and those of his men would carry them to victory. So much so that when he crossed the Delaware River in January of 1777 and found the British already there and waiting for him, he was capable of performing one of the war's most incredible feats. He galloped out in front of his battle lines on his great white horse and situated himself squarely between the opposing armies. There he directed fire. Volley after volley left men on both sides dead or dying. But Washington, whose white horse made him a perfect target, remained untouched by the shower of bullets. The Americans rallied and won the battle. The Continental Congress called for a day of thanksgiving and prayer. Washington seemed to take it all in stride. It's one of the facts of history that America as a nation grew out of armed conflict. It is also true that the United States had to resort to the force of arms to remain united. Once again, it was a leader deeply devoted to prayer who was called upon to preserve us as a nation. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln became the 16th president of the United States. With his election, South Carolina seceded from the Union, plunging the nation into a great civil war. In July of 1863, 163,000 soldiers came together on a battlefield that would forever be known simply as Gettysburg. Lincoln left us a record of his appeal to God just prior to this critical encounter. I went to my room one day, and I locked the door, and I got down on my knees before Almighty God and prayed to him mightily for victory at Gettysburg. And I then and there made a solemn vow to Almighty God that if he would stand by our boys at Gettysburg, I would stand by him. But not even Lincoln could imagine how powerfully the manifestation of the answer to his prayer would come. Colonel Joshua Chambers described the event in an official report of the incident to the War Department. Our lines began to break before the overwhelming number of rebel soldiers. Our guns let loose, but the enemy kept coming. We had to defend that hill. To lose Little Round Top would have been to lose everything. Then a terrible thing happened. We ran out of ammunition. I thought we would have to fall back. Out of nowhere rode a tall figure on a shining white horse. Well, I know this is incredible, but the rider was dressed as a revolutionary general. And the face, I will swear, was the face of George Washington. He raised his arm high and gave the signal to advance. My men began to shout and cheer. The rebels saw it too, and they began to shoot at it. The figure rode back and forth, and the Confederate guns followed it. He should have been killed a thousand times over. No human being could have survived that fire. The rider urged our men on, and raising their bayonets, they charged down the hill on top of the rebels. The bayonet charge must have taken them by surprise, for they turned and fled. We almost lost Little Round Top, and if we had, we could have lost Gettysburg. 